I'm like, bro, shut up. You got to learn how to defend yourself. You're going to be here for a while. You need to know how to hurt people. For real, man. Matter of fact, then I asked him the golden question. I'm like, yo, matter of fact, how many bars of cold craft soap do you got in your cell? What's up, y'all? It's Nate Almighty, aka the Global Dustin Ambassador, man, with another Rikers Island story. You dig? Shout out to those of you who are returning subscribers. Steady supporters, shout out to those who've been dropping them cash app donations. If you're new here, welcome. I tell you right now, this is not just a channel talking about jail stories. This is a channel based on losses that happen in jail. So everybody knows that everyone takes losses no matter what gang you in, no matter who you are. Before I get into the story, like, share, comment, subscribe. But here we go. This story is about how I helped a... Uh, a soft dude, um, one would call him a dead room dummy, uh, beat up and embarrass, utterly embarrass, okay, this gang member who had power within this house. Okay, so this is how it goes now. I'm gonna paint the picture for you. If you familiar with my stories, I speak about how I turned 18 in a box and while I was in the box, I read the book, The Autobiography of Malcolm X, and also Behold a Pale White Horse. Then I became enlightened after that, and I ended up basically not being a bully no more. It just so happened that the timing that I was in the box was at a time where I had already built up a respectable enough reputation to where anyone who was in 74 around this time, or maybe it happens in jail period on Rikers Island. If you already build up a certain reputation and you cool with certain dudes, if you go to a new house and the people who run that house already know you, um, unless you wanna like be on the team and fight for a chair, where as a matter of fact, the chairs were gone at this time. The chairs were gone at this time, but unless you wanted to fight and be on the team, the people who ran the house would be like, Okay, I know you, you good. Or in my instance, I pull up, they be like, yo, yo Nas, what you doing here? What you doing here? They be like, all right, you good, bro. Don't worry about it, you know what I'm saying? Like, you need food, whatever, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm, a lot of people don't understand that, at least in C-74 Rikers Island, when I was there, yes, the gang members um, are the most brutal. Yes, they have the most power, but, um. If you had a reputation for not being pussy, right? And they were already aware of this. If they really was cool with you, they wasn't gonna have you jump through the ringer or have to do all the extra steps that one would take if he's fresh to the island and nobody knows him. This particular house right here was three upper. I was in three upper two times. Okay, this was the first time I was in 3UPPA. I ended up in 3UPPA a little bit later than that where I was in there with, you know what I'm saying, people like uh, the bro L Boogie from Cortland and stuff like that. But this is the first time I was in 3UPPA. And um, there's two dudes that ran the crib. They knew me already. So basically once I pulled up to the a &B gate, I was good, you know what I'm saying? Um, they said, hey bro, you good, rock out, um, do your thing. Just don't get involved in the gang politics. Don't get involved with the gang politics and and you'll be able to, you know what I'm saying, rock out. Okay, so there was this particular gang member, right? Um, he was from the Bronx as well. I did not like him. He was a bully. He is a gang member and I'm not gonna say the gang because y'all niggas in gangs that be watching these stories, Y'all get real sensitive if something happened to somebody from your particular gang, as if I don't speak mostly about losses that I took. You know what I'm saying? But since, but y'all like to act like y'all so invincible. None of y'all take losses. Everybody know how to fight. Everybody the most violent and lethal. Nobody snitches. Since y'all wanna live in that fantasy, 
Y'all can live in that fantasy for this story right here. But like I said, um, this dude was a relentless bully. And like I said, after I came out the box and I read them books, um, spiritually, it just didn't sit well with me being a bully. And I didn't like watching bullies. Um, at the same time, me and this dude, we wasn't cool, but we had no problems. Um, he did slightly feel a way that um, the people above him could vouch for me. And he, he when he first got there, you know, he had to uh, fight for his team spot or whatever it may have you. But once he got his team spot, he was a real um, bunhole, you feel me? And um, I used to just watch him all the time, you know, just just deep hands, day room dummies. You know, they could be on the phone or, or just chilling, just chilling, um, doing whatever they're doing. And I'm watching them playing the rib shot game with these dudes when they're not paying attention. Um, when it's Friday night, I'm seeing them go, hey, you and you go in the corner, y'all slap box for our entertainment. Um, I'm watching them just, you already sending slips under people's doors on commissary day to, 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 to get a couple things, you know, after, after these dudes already got to set out the two people that run the crib, you giving out extra lists. And even after they give you what you asked for, I'm watching this dude go into other people's cells and take more stuff either in front of their face or, or even worse when they not around to even try to defend themselves if that was an option. And I, I'm telling myself like, oh, I don't like this dude. This is one of those people where you around a bunch of men, let's say you in school or jail, anywhere, and you watching a guy who's a cornball and you saying to yourself, if he come at me with the nonsense, I'm breaking him. I'm breaking him off. You know what I'm saying? I'm pause. I'm breaking him up. You know what I mean? He was one of those kind of guys. And like I said, we never had any issues. We even exchanged some small talk, maybe even a laugh or two. But um, I really didn't like him. I really didn't like him. So one day, we all in the day room. And for whatever reason, the guy who's running the house, he turns the TV off. And when he turns the TV off, you know, everyone says TV off, TV off, right? And everyone who's not soft has to shut the fuck up. So when they do that, all of us that's, you know, chilling, that's not soft, you know, we have our little small talk as usual, per usual, regular, regular. But this particular day room dummy, um, he was minding his business, eating his food. He was quiet. And not the main guy who I don't like, but it was another guy. Another guy sees his ribs is open. Boom, punches him in the ribs. And when he punches him in the ribs, the dude curls to the side. He goes, ow, right? So once he said, ow, I immediately seen uh, this dude who I said I don't like. He watched the whole thing happen. But still, once the Darren Dummy says, ow, he gets up. Slaps him in the face mad hard. Like, yo, y'all day room niggas not supposed to be talking. You want to get beat up? And I'm in my head, I'm like, why is this dude so aggressive? It's like, dude, is he one of those like, 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 like he didn't have a hug by his mother growing up? Is he one of those dudes who he don't have uh, uh, no support at home? So he got to be extra extra violent, extra disrespectful. And I just really didn't like it at all, you know? And um, the day room dummy actually just held it down. Um, he put his head down towards his tray. He kept eating. Um, I seen him fighting tears, you know? And um, it just rubbed me the wrong way. It rubbed me the wrong way. I felt some way about it. But like I said, you know, um, if I personally if I personally was just to jump out the window, being that this dude is a gang member, it could get real complicated, you know? And um, it, it would cause me to have a whole bunch of extra fights that I didn't feel like having, you know? Like a fight is cool, but who really wants to go to the box again? Like I had already been in the box twice, you know? Like I'm wild cool with the two dudes that run the crib. They don't ask me to, to they never asked me to do no crash dummy stuff. You know, they never asked me to, to 
to do nothing for them that they wouldn't do for themselves. They really gave me respect, you know, as a man, because these are dudes who, mind you, at this point, I already been on the island for at least a year already. So these are dudes who I either ran into at Law Library or, or I was in different houses with them before they climbed up the ranks and got to where they was at, you know? And I'm like, I really, they as gang members, they gonna have to do what a gang member's supposed to do if I get involved and, 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 and start things with gang members. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna see how much heart this dude who just got bullied has. So after the meal, we all chilling and stuff like that. It's about to be law library time. And it was already known that the two dudes that ran the crib, they had to go to law library to, I guess, meet up with some other gang members and have some type of gang meeting that I didn't give no damn about. And I realized that here's the opportunity. Here's the opportunity, right, for the dude who was just bullied to bully the bully. So, while the bully is on the telephone, right, I step to the day room dummy. I'm like, hey, bro, listen, um, why you just let him slap you like that? Why you just let him slap you like that? Like, you don't, like... You could have let your nuts hang, you know what I mean? This is Rikers Island, but you've been here for a little while. As you can see, dudes is mostly just fighting, you know? Like, it ain't... Nobody got stabbed in, in the whole four building in a little minute, you know? Like, let your nuts hang, bro. He like, yo, listen, I I don't really want the drama. Um, I just want to do my time and go home, this, that, and the third. I'm like, hey, bro... It's looking like you're going to be here for a while. Didn't you just get remanded the other day for the second time? Like, why are you even going through this? You're like, yo, I just... I'm like, bro, shut up. You got to learn how to defend yourself. If you're going to be here for a while, you need to know how to hurt people. For real, man. Matter of fact, then I asked him the golden question. I'm like, yo, matter of fact, how many bars of cold craft soap do you got in your cell? He said, two. I'm like, you got any big pieces of soap? Because you know, um, going to commissary, they allowed us, they allowed us to buy like Irish Spring soap and Dove soap and um that yellow soap that I'm forgetting the name of right now. And a lot of us would, you know, like if it's if they got the heater running, we'll take like soap, right? Maybe break it in half. Me personally, I use the Irish Spring, and you can use it as a smell good. Put it on your heater, and then it'll make your whole cell smell good, right? But I asked him, I'm like, so you don't got no extra soap? He's like, nah. I'm like, you ain't got no batteries neither? He like, nah. I'm like, yo, listen, bro, I got you. I'm going to show you how to hurt this dude because I know you want to get back at him, all right? But here's the thing, though. If you catch a new charge, don't say I gave you this. Don't say nothing. If you choose to do this to this man, you made this decision as a man, you got to live with it, all right? He like, what I got to do? Do I got to stab him? I'm like, nah, bro. I'm, I don't deal with shanks, bro. I just asked you about soap, right? All right, cool. So this is what I want you to do. In about five minutes, go to the gate where the CEOs is at. Tell them you got to take a sit down, right? And then just wait in your cell. I'm gonna wait about five more minutes. I'm gonna go say I gotta take a sit down too. And I'm gonna come back and slide some stuff under your cell. All right? What I want you to do is put every single thing inside of a sock that I give you. Put it inside a sock. And when you come back out here, you play the element of surprise. This is what I told him. You play the element of surprise. You get one chance. Your first swing, nigga, you better make it count, bro. Make it count. Now, here's the thing. If you miss, you're going to get your boots spanked, all right? Even though the dudes that run the house is not here, it's still a couple dudes, including the dude that violated you, that's on the team, that's still here. If you miss, you're going to get your boots spanked on top of already getting punched in your ribs and slapped like you was his bitch. But if you connect with that first one, you still gonna get spanked, but you gonna earn your respect and your name gonna buzz around here. You fuck around and become a legend. Now, 
You may have to get into it with a couple more dudes in the future, but who knows? You might get lucky, go home on probation. If not, once you involve yourself in this, you're going to have to let your nuts hang wherever you go. You willing to do this? He like, yeah. I'm like, all right, so cool. Go in your cell. So once he go in the cell, he waiting. I go in my cell. I do this. I do this. But this is basically what you do. You make a weapon out the sock and the, and, and, the, and the soap, right? And you put it in the sock, right? I put one bar Iron Spring soap into the sock. I put four batteries in there and I put two small core craft soaps. The core craft smoke soaps is real small, right? I boiled it up, put it in my pocket, left my cell, went to the day room dummy cell. So I told him, I'm like, hey, listen, he probably gonna get off the phone in about another five minutes. You come out, you do whatever you gotta do. I would say hit him in the eye, the nose, or the mouth. Make him bleed, make him see blood, all right? Make him see blood. Now you sure you wanna do this? Give my shit back if you're not gonna do this. He like, I'ma do it. So I walks back in the day room, I'm chilling. Mind you, we were out to smack DVD, you know what I'm saying? The CO had bought in the um the roller TV, the TV that's on the roller thing with the, you know what I'm saying? So we had the DVD player. We watch the smack DVD, stuff like that. Things that keep men distracted, right? So I'm chilling. We all chilling, sitting down, watching TV. In comes a Darren Dummy. So while he walking in, I see his pocket bulging. He got the thing in his pocket already. You know what I'm saying? So I just give him a look. I'm like, right? He give me the look back. I didn't say nothing else, right? So boom. After a couple minutes, he comes from behind the dude, come from behind the dude, right? And swings it from behind him, right? Mad hard, swung it around him. Boom! Hit him in the nose instantly. Hit him in the nose, the dude goes. Right? Gets up. Soon as he turns around to face the dude, the dude whaps him again on top of his head. Whap, and then brought it back. Whap! Whap, and then he just start going like that. Mind you, this is all taking a couple seconds, right? Right? But while he getting his beat on, while he getting his beat on, right? Dudes already start jumping him and punching him, but he's still swinging the sock, right? So he's swinging the sock wild like his goddamn nunchucks and shit. He basically like, whoa, 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 right? <laughs> I'm making this sound funny. I'm trying to pay the picture you had, you know what I'm saying? He ain't like Bruce Lee or nothing, but he's swinging it around, he's swinging it around. Um, he hit one dude by mistake, but the damage was already done to the main dude, because I seen the dude, he had a, like a crack at the top of his nose, he bleeding. They spanking him. Now he getting spanked now, right? As I told them, it was gonna happen. So while they spanking him, stomping him out, he curled up like this, right? Mind you, he did this at the time where um, I didn't even have to tell him. He waited for the CO to do they, they little tour walk where they walk all the way down to the end of the cells, look in people's cells, make sure ain't nobody killed they self, nobody um, doing no drugs, nobody cutting they self, stuff like that. He waited to the right time. So he already violated the bully, violated him, violated him, you know what I'm saying? Dude bleeding, he had a white shirt on, nose leaking, blood all over his shirt. Um, they stomping him out after he violated the bully. The CO comes, presses the PBA button. Here comes the turtles, the A-team. You know what we all do. On our knees, elbows to the wall. And that's basically it, you know. Um, they took the kid, they took the dude, right? They moved him out the house. They moved the bully out the house. They took the kid directly to the box. They found the sock. I don't know what happened after that. I don't know if he caught an extra charge, whatever, whatever. But he damn sure did not snitch on me. He did not snitch on me. And um, I think the bully knows 
caught a fracture, it was broke or something. It, it, it was it was at least another two months before I seen the bully again. And then last I heard of the Darren Dummy, who I helped get his redemption, he ended up going home on probation or something like that, or the charges got dropped, something like that. But I consider that to be my first good deed after being enlightened on Rikers Island. Um, I know the story crazy. I was at I was on Rikers Island at a time where it was a lot of like weird stuff going on. But like I said, it was Bloods being cool with Crips and Crips being cool with Bloods. Bloods using Crips to violate other Bloods. Stuff like that, you know? Gang members giving other gang members up as sacrifices so they can switch they set. All type of wild shit, you know what I'm saying? Um, being that we were all 16 to 18, there was no structure, you feel me? It was really about who was tough, who's not, who's willing to take a beating and give a beating, and who's and who's not willing to take a beating and give a beating. And these are the people who had their respect more than anything else. But uh, that's a wild story. Like, share, comment, subscribe, peace. Oh yeah, by the way, by the way, this can work out in the town too. I'm a 90s baby. Some of y'all, some of y'all got 90s babies. Your mothers, your older sisters done already told y'all. You know what I'm saying? If you got beef with somebody, put some rocks in the sock or something and you go lump their ass up. You know what I'm saying? Stay out of jail if you're young. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Peace.